in Lakota Star Knowledge, there's a distinction between holy people and medicine people. Holy people see things that we don't see. They hear things that we don't hear. They can communicate with things that we can't hear or see. They know the language of these beings called Tungashilapi. People call them spirits, but they're not really spirits. They are real beings because they do come in ceremonies. I can't say too much about it because it's a sacred thing, but they are very helpful. The word Tungashila, this comes from a word called Tungan. This is an original creation. This is a grandfather. It's a helpful being. And in our language, whenever something is endearing to you, you know, something is really special to you because you love it, whatever it is, you add the suffix la at the end. Like for those of us who are parents, like the girl, we chincha la. See the la on there? Same thing for boys. Hokshila. You see that? The la. That's what that signifies. Tonkan, they choose who holy people are going to be. And it has nothing to do with how smart you are or how spiritual you are. Because that would be linear thinking. And that's not what nature is like. Nature is not linear at all. It does go in a certain direction, but it also can go in other directions at the same time too. Yes, we are born, but we don't really die. We're born again. This is what we learn from nature. So to say that going from point A to point Z including all the alphabet letters in between, some people will say, that's the journey, that's what we're supposed to do. And Lakota Star Knowledge says, no, it's not. Lakota Star Knowledge puts all points in a circle and says, okay, we start someplace, and then we, yes, we move forward for a time. But during the time that we travel between two points, we change. So it might be a good idea to go back to that starting point again to see what you missed the first time because you've developed, you've changed. That means you see more. So you look, go to the starting point again, and yeah, there it was. It was there the whole time, but you just weren't developed enough to see it. So in the quote of star knowledge, it's kind of encouraged that you take some time to go back to a point where you've already been and look at it again because you might see something you didn't pick up the last time. That's why it's important to come to peace with difficulties from the past. So when you think of them, it doesn't bother you and then you might see something you didn't see before and you learn something again. That's the reason why. So for the ancestors, it's non-linear thinking. It doesn't just go forward. It can go in different directions sometimes at the same time. That's through our consciousness. So that's how we continue to learn. That's what life is about, yeah? Learning so we can live, so we can love. So as we live, as our bodies develop, that doesn't mean they're getting better. It just means we're learning. And sometimes we have to go backwards to learn. So when these tungkans, they later became known as Tungashi, these beings. They can see inside our bodies. They see where our physical body, our mind, our emotions, and our soul, they see where that connects. They see our sacred centers. And so they look inside somebody and they see, oh, there's one that could make a really good instrument. So they choose that person. That it doesn't have to do with that person being good. It doesn't have to do with that person going to a bunch of ceremonies or his level of spirituality. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with the complete makeup of that person. That there's something about that person that makes him perfect to be a candidate, to be an instrument 
for the Tangashi. See, they see it. We don't, but they see it. So they choose who the holy people are going to be. So in other words, you can't be a holy person just by doing a bunch of ceremonies and then thinking you know enough and then now you can teach or whatever and conduct your own ceremonies and make yourself a medicine man or whatever. That doesn't work like that. That's linear thinking. And that's really disrespectful to these beings because they're the ones who are doing the work. They are the ones who are doing the healing. The holy people are just instruments, nothing more. They have absolutely no power. The power is coming from the Tanga. They're the ones that are doing the work. They're just using the body of the holy person to conduct whatever needs to be done with the physical body. But they're the ones doing the work. Healing is flowing from them through the holy person and into the person being doctored. So the well-known holy person by the name of Fool's Crow, he described it like this. He said, I'm like a hollow bones. He said, I don't have any power. He said, I'm like a hollow bones. They work through me. I don't do anything. And I don't know how they do it. I don't know what they do, but they use me to do it. That's what a holy person is. He's not a man that has all this mystical power. He has nothing at all. That's a holy person. But they can see these things. They talk with them. They can speak with animals. They can speak with plants. They know their languages. That's a holy person. And they see themselves as servants to all creation, including to the plants and animals. So if you go inside a real holy person's house, there's no screens, there's no screen doors, there's bugs crawling around on the inside. And <laughs> Do you see what I mean? They're servants to them. It's a hard life to live. If they choose you, don't plan on getting married because you're not going to have time for your wife. You're not going to have time for your husband. You're not going to have time for your children because you're always going to be doing their work. It's a hard life. So that's holy persons. Medicine people, a medicine man, medicine woman, what they do is they work with plants. They know the songs to process the plants and to administer the medicine to the people who are sick. These are medicine people. Holy people can choose to be medicine people also, but it doesn't work the other way around. When a person becomes a medicine person, they can't just say oh, they're going to be a holy person. Because remember, it's the beings, these tungashi, that choose them. So, as these Tunkan started to help people, they became so loved by the people that they added the La at the end of it. So they're called Tungashi La. That's singular. When a bunch of them are in the room, they call them Tungashi La B. The B is the plural. That's the first definition of that word, Tungashi La. As the humans came upon the earth for the first time, the people became old and men became grandfathers, that they gave them that name too. Tungashila. Now, now, so that means grandfather. But they added that la concept to grandmother too. A lot of people don't use that word, and that's sad. Unchila is a grandmother that's really endearing to you. Unchi just means a normal grandmother. But one who's really loving to you, you say unchi la. That word does exist. It's just that people don't use it. And I don't know why. And then the third definition was when we came into contact with Americans. And they're trying to make treaties with the people. And the chiefs were saying, well, who is this president? Uh, who is this American president? What does he do? And they said that, well, he takes care of his people. He loves them. 
He loves all the children. And then the chief said, oh, like a grandpa. And they said, yeah, like a grandfather. So then they called the president, Tunkashila, the third definition. <laughs> so in this flag song, you hear this word, Tunkashila, Tawapaha, that's the president's flag. They're talking about the American flag. They're not talking about a prayer flag. A lot of people misunderstand that. So that's the third definition of Tungashila. So anyway, the Tungashila B choose the holy people. And holy people cannot make other holy people. They can't choose, because remember, they don't have any power. So it's the Tungashila B that choose who they're going to be. And for medicine people, they can choose another one. Because they're going to recognize something about a boy or a girl. is like, hmm, this, this kid really likes plants. <laughs> so they watch them. And then they slowly guide them. And then they see if they want to be a medicine person. And then they choose them. They then teach them. And they recognize the herbs. They show them how to prepare them. They teach them the songs that they need to sing as they're doing preparation and administration of the medicine. That's medicine people. They can choose each other, but they only deal with plants and their preparation, administration, and prayer. That's their work. So medicine man and holy man are not the same thing. Now, one of the two ceremonies that Sikdomi gave the people is the Uwiti. And so usually today they call the men who Iktomi chooses as Yuipi men. And he gives them power. So, Yuipi men are the only ones of all these healers who really have power. And usually they have a spider with them all the time. That's who's giving them the power. That's what Iktomi means. Spider but there's a, an interesting take on this, that even though Yuwiti men are the only kind of healers who have any power, each time they conduct one of these ceremonies, they lose a little bit of it. So when they run out of power, then they're not Yuwiti men anymore. Now they're back to normal. To read more about Lakota Star Knowledge Spirituality, you can read my book called Wichoha Otechike. You can see the book cover on the right side of this screen. This book contains the information to what I talk about on my Lakota Spirituality videos. To purchase this book, please click below where it says Show More. Clicking on that link will open up the description below. And there you will see a link called to purchase my books. As you will see, it's an eBay link. Click on that eBay link and there you will see the information to get this book. Lila Pilamayelo. Thank you very much.